<laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Moe aka Jamo and I'm with Evans and Manuel and I'm really happy to be your host for today's video. In this day vlog we're going to talk about the graphic side <laughs> of our game Project Polynesia. So without any further ado, let's go. Before we start, I would like to thank you for all the kind comments you left on the previous video. It really means a lot to us, so thank you really. And for those of you who missed our first devlog, if you want to learn more about what we are trying to achieve with Project Polynesia, I recommend you watch our first devlog by clicking the link in the description. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Moi, aka Jamon, and I'm a self-taught digital artist. I've always been a fan of video games, and I've been drawing since I was a child. So working on Project Polynesia with Evans and Manon is like a dream come true. As I said in the beginning of the video, today I'll be your host for this devlog which will be focusing on the character design of the hero of our game. Going from sketching his appearance with Photoshop straight to his 3D modeling with Blender. Project Polynesia is a small scale game, so from the start we decided to challenge ourselves by trying to come up with the hero and its enemies in just two days of work, which represent around 16 hours of work. To do so, I started with some basic sketches of our main protagonist, but then I quickly realized that his, since his personality and charisma were too strong, he started to look more like a boss and less like a hero, which was taking me away from the look of Zelda Link's opening, my main inspiration for our game. In order to address that problem, I decided to start all over again, but this time by trying to make a character as if it was directly taken from the game, Zelda Link's opening. To achieve this, he needed to have the same proportions as Link and look nice when seen from a top-down perspective. This approach helped a lot and it gave me a clear vision of what I wanted our hero to look like. Thanks to that, I was able to do a lot more iterations. Little by little, his silhouette began to get less muscular, more common and look more like a Link from a Legend of Zelda series. However, even though we were happy with the design, something was still missing. What our hero needed is a role or something that will make him a part of this Polynesian world. So we talked with Manoa and Evans for lots and lots of hours, and then BAM! He's a fisherman! Once the hero was done, I did the four enemies using the same method. The process was way faster, and once all the different concepts were validated by the team, I then started the 3D modeling phase with Blender. Because of the small scale of our project and avoid wasting time, I challenged myself one more time by giving me 5 days not only to learn how to use Blender, but also to model the hero of our game at the same time. I started using cubes, building a basic low poly mesh bit by bit with the proportion of our hero. And once I was satisfied with it, I then created the high poly version with the sculpting mode of Blender. Once I was satisfied with the result, I started doing some retopology, UV unwrapping, and I switched between Blender and Photoshop for the texturing phase. I then went through the rigging and skinning phase to prepare the hero for the animation phase. Having lost some precious time with the modeling of the hero, for the second character, I decided to be more confident with myself and try another approach for the modeling process. Instead of going with a low poly version, a basic mesh, I directly started with the sculpting phase, building a high poly version and going with the retopology right after that. In my opinion, it was worth it, because I was able to not lose more time in the process. Respecting deadline has always been a weakness of our team. This is why we really would try to respect our schedule for this project. It's a difficult exercise, but if you don't do it, you end up constantly pushing back the deadlines, which leads to a loss of motivation, self-confidence, and sometimes you even end up wanting to abort the project. I would like to ask you a question. Have you ever experienced some difficulties trying to finish a game project, respecting deadlines? If so, do you have any solution you might want to share with us? In any case, please feel free to put your experience down in the comments below. We would really like to know your thoughts on this subject. Hopefully, this discussion might be a source of inspiration for anyone struggling with the same issues. With Evans and Manoir, Project Polynesia is a real passion for us. However, due to the small size of our team, sometimes we need to do a lot more different things at the same time in order to bring our project to the finish line. For example, 
I not only work on the artistic part of our game, but also on the creation of artworks for the communication around it. As of events, he does the programming, writes the story, and manages the project and the team at the same time. Manoa is our sound designer and he helped me a lot during my work. I will let him tell you more about what he does. Hey everyone, I'm Manoa from the YouTube channel Game Day Radio. Normally in our team, I take care of the sound design of Project Polynesia, but as we said just before, I decided to put the music and sound effects aside for the moment in order to help me with his work. So, I too decided to learn more about Blender in order to take care of the animations of the characters already created, while Moe is busy creating the other ones. The goal here is not to create the final animations, but rather to create a first version so that Moe only has to make a second pass and adjust my animations. At the time of recording this video, I finished 29 of the hero's animations and I'm moving on the animation of the fold that Moes just finished. Hi everyone, I'm Evans from the YouTube channel Game Dev Teacher and in our team I'm the programmer of Project Polynesia. My role in the character creation phase is to integrate everything Manoa and Moe created into our Unreal Engine project in order to make sure that the rendering of the mesh is good and that the animations of the character work good. The fact that Manoa creates a rough version of the animations saves us a significant amount of time since it allows us to adjust the different timings in order to make them correspond to the gameplay expectations of Project Polynesia. So, for example, if I find the timing of the sword attack is much too fast, I just have to tell Manoa to adjust the animation so that it fits the gameplay. Once the timings are correctly calibrated, Moe can then make a second pass to refine the final animation, which I will then reintegrate into the project. So that's it for this video. I hope you like it. And the next devlog will be about... Sound design. Sound design. So, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.